G'day guys and gal, it's no secret that I'm not a huge fan about how most of the Primarchs fell to chaos. For supposedly mega geniuses with unbreakable wills, they made some pissy weak ass hypocritical decisions that led to their eternal damnation. Some traders fall, like Mortarians, was embarrassing. Others, like Conrad's, wasn't surprising, whilst there are a few whose fall was pretty justified, like Angron. Horus is an interesting case. In the past, I've blamed it on him being insecure about his male pattern boldness. And whilst that is a hill I will die on, I owe it to you guys and gal to really deep dive into how one of mankind's greatest champions, a paragon of mercy and justice, a loyal son of the emperor, decided to betray everything and undo all his work, effort, relationships, and literal soul. You would hope there'd be a pretty bloody good justification to do that. Before we get started, I'm not going to waste your time telling you what Manscaped is, but I will tell you why you should consider picking it up. First up is their famous shaver, called the Lawnmower 4.0. It's waterproof, so I just leave mine in the shower, and it's great for any body shaving below the neck due to its anti-nick and anti-rash technology. Shit just glides over your balls and shaft no worries. You can use it on your neck and your face, but if you use it like I use it, then that's probably not the most hygienic thing to do. That's all good though, the Plow 2.0 is an amazing one blade razor that will completely delete your neck beard. It also has safety technology, so there's rarely any nicks, despite how clean the shave is. You want to smell good? Manscaped deodorant is long lasting and gives you that fresh mature smell. Or if you have any issues with stanker deck, such as when you exercise or take a whiz, then the ball deodorant completely nullifies it. With these male specific products and more, such as the very comfortable and stylish Manscaped boxes, I hope you can see why I've been such a long-time customer and partner of Manscaped. To top it all off, using my link and code MAJORGILL below, you'll get 20% off as well as free international shipping. Cheers to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Today we'll go over the fall of Horus, talking about the physical, mental, and spiritual reasons why he betrayed the Emperor, and if it was justified or not. Let's get into it. If you know a bit about Warhammer lore, you'd probably know that the fall of Horus completely blindsided everyone, except maybe the Emperor, but that's a topic for a different video that I've already made. Even when a few people discovered his betrayal early, they couldn't raise the alarm in time, as nobody believed Horus could be capable of doing that. Magnus broke the Emperor's Webway project in order to warn him about Horus, but the Emperor was so mad about humanity's best chance at beating Chaos getting ruined, that he told Magnus to eat a bag of dicks. Likewise, Eldrad tried to convince the slutty Fulgrim that Horus had gone bad, which caused Fulgrim to flip out and fight the Eldar. There were a number of genuine attempts that all failed because it was so inconceivable that Horus was anything other than a loyal son. It's not hard to see why people thought that. Horus was a kind, charismatic, and merciful Primarch, always seeking peaceful compliance and even compromise to achieve that. Whenever things went poorly under his watch, he was full of regret and he vowed to make amends. Likewise, Likewise, his four Astarte advisors, his Mournival, were also loyal to the Emperor. There was no Erebus or Corferion trying to molest his soul and turn him to chaos. Well, at least not at the start. The only one of the Mournival that expressed a hint of anti-Emperor was Abaddon, who was slightly salty that the Emperor left the Crusade. Literally up until Horus was shanked by the Cursed Chaos Knife, he was a loyal son. Yet when he woke up, he had decided to rebel. So what was his reasoning? First off, the pressure of being Warmaster really started getting to Horus. It made him feel like he had to succeed in everything and be perfect. However, his first three campaigns since becoming Warmaster were all a bit disastrous. His attempts at diplomacy with human worlds he encountered kept ending in violence and failure. One of the worlds he conquered seven decades ago rebelled against him, and the whole Interrex debacle really fucked with him as well. So his insecurity was at an all-time high. Combine that with the fact that as Warmaster, he was getting harassed by the entire Imperium, requesting his aid or demanding things of him, it really started grinding his gears. At a similar time, Malkador and the Council of Terror, whom Horus despised, ordered him to start collecting tithes and taxes from the newly compliant worlds, which Horus resisted as he thought it was a shitty idea. He grew resentful at the fact that normal humans were being put in positions of authority over the Primarchs and Astartes. He sometimes wished he was not chosen as Warmaster, and he was shitty at some of his brothers for not genuinely supporting him. So there is a lot of emotion going on here, bit of 
family drama. However, a lot of this resentment and negative thoughts were easily suppressed by Horace. But as he was hit with failure after failure, that negativity rose to the surface. To make matters worse, Erebus joined the Legion as an emissary of the word bearers and he acted as Horace's chief advisor, subtly manipulating him to draw out that negativity even more. Despite all this, Horace was still a good dude. He was open about talking to his new remembrancer and sharing his life story with her. He still appreciated his Mournival and he took their advice. Above all though, he was still a very loyal son of the Emperor. When he encountered the Nurgleite forces on Davin, he was disgusted and he swore to slaughter them with a vengeance. As he faced their leader and the leader asked Horace to join him, Horace was like, fuck off you smelly dog, and killed him, suffering a wound in the process from the infamous Chaos Knife the Anthanamane. Up until this wounding, there had been a few moments where Horace was a bit of a depresso expresso, but it had been very tame and he hadn't spoken one ill word of the Emperor. Literally the worst thing he said leading up to this was during an unexpected and tragic battle. He looked at the sky and was like, fuck me dad, this is a bit of a pickle, eh? That's it, that is as bad as it got. So what happened while he was having a cheeky coma that made him go traitor? When Horace was stabbed, he was slipping in and out of consciousness as the poison in his body was tailor-made to kill him. During his last few hours of consciousness, he called for his remembrancer and he told her his deepest thoughts on his deathbed. He let out all his resentment and truth, his regrets and wishes. Even on his deathbed, he wasn't that bad. Sure, he talked a bit of shit about some of his Primarch brothers, but there was no fuck the Emperor. After this, Horace was taken to the Chaos Temple on Davin for his healing. During this, healing, Horace had a vivid vision of a nice meadow that kept getting corrupted. Magnus attempted to reach Horace during the vision, but he kept getting blocked by the chaos magic at play. Erebus then appeared to Horace as a guide, however he disguised himself as one of Horace's favourite sons, a dead Astartes called Sir Janus, who used to be part of the Mournival before he was killed shortly after Horace became Warmaster. Fake-ass Sir Janus Erebus decided to take Horace through a vivid vision of a potential future, showing Horace a shrine well dedicated to the worship of the Emperor. Horace was disgusted and couldn't believe that the secular Emperor would allow this. He also saw statues of half of his brother Primarchs, the Loyalists, and he grew enraged when he realised that there was no statue of him, showing us that he actually had a massive ego, as he was more upset that he didn't have a statue, rather than the fact that there was an entire world dedicated to worshipping the Emperor. Erebus told him that the Emperor was planning to ascend to Godhood, which is why he left the Great Crusade, and for some reason, Horus just ate that shit up. He barely questioned Erebus or the legitimacy of the vision. Even though the vision was accurate, it only became so because Horus started the heresy. The vision's context was a total lie. Even when Magnus finally broke through and appeared in front of Horus, telling him that the vision was a lie and exposing the fake Sir Janus as Erebus, Horus was still on the fence. Magnus literally proved Erebus was a liar, and Horus even called out Erebus as a liar as well when Erebus slipped up. But in another weird moment, Magnus tried to kill Erebus with sorcery in the vision, but he was too far away to do damage. Horus gets upset because Magnus was banned from using sorcery by the Emperor, but then two minutes later, Horus decides to betray the Emperor, even though a part of the reason why he told Magnus to fuck off was because he defied the Emperor's decree. It's just a very weird chain of thinking and a weird decision by Horus to choose to betray the Emperor after the entire vision and interaction. He believed everything Erebus said even though Erebus was proven to be a liar. He told Magnus to fuck off for disobeying the Emperor moments before he went traitor himself. You could argue that Horus chose to live rather than die, which is why he betrayed the Emperor. His life depended on it, but that point never really came up. He was never like, ah fuck, I don't want to go traitor, but I'll die if I don't. There's even actually a good chance he would have survived as everyone in the vision was acting like if Horus chose to stay loyal, he would still wake up and recover. After all, Gilliman was stabbed by a knife forged from the Anthanamane that wounded Horus, yet G-Man just copped it and went on with his day. It seemed like the conflict within Horus was what was allowing the knife to kill him, not the actual knife itself, if that makes any sense. When Horus chose to betray the Emperor, he didn't have to sign a contract or anything. His soul wasn't claimed by Chaos and it wasn't locked into this course of action. He just woke up in good health. It was only later, after Istvan, that Horus would strike bargains with Chaos. Him falling to Chaos and him betraying the Emperor were two different events that, although linked, weren't the same. There was definitely some kind of taint on Horus's soul though. When he awoke, he became a massive fucking asshole. He stopped listening to the Mournival, wanted Loken to die despite previously seeing Loken as one of his favourite sons, killed his Remembrancer who he had formed a mutually respectful bond with, organised the assassination of his critics, and probably worst of all, gathered all the Remembrancers 
thousands of them into one place and got his Astartes to massacre them all with Bolter, Flamer and Chainsword. He became cruel and cold almost as soon as he woke up from his coma, which was super fucking jarring as a raider. He has been set up as this paragon of humanity for two books, then BAM! Mustache twirling villain. I don't blame the writers as they had a strict time frame for making Horace become traitor, and the books are well written, but Horace's fall remains pretty stupid. This is why I joke about his boldness being a major contributing factor. The official reasons don't cut it, so there has to be another one. So was his fall, his vicious betrayal justified? Fuck no, Horus had actually correctly guessed why the Emperor left the Great Crusade, that being he believed the Emperor was doing something to minimise the influence of the warp. He knew Erebus was a lie but he believed the visions he was shown. He saw the effects of chaos and it disgusted him, yet he accepted their help soon after he first fought them. Sure, he was allowed to be disgruntled and maybe a bit resentful about how much work and pressure came with being Warmaster, but to just go fuck it and tear the galaxy a new asshole was the mother of all overreactions. As I said on day one and as I say now, GW, if you want to fix Horace's fall to chaos, then I'm gonna need about three short stories narrated by Toby Longworth, which talk about how insecure he is about his boldness, and how in the visions he was shown by Erebus, chaos was able to give him a full set of luscious hair. That would genuinely fix everything and I'd never complain again. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then buy a Major Kill cosplay calendar. I've over-ordered the 8-4s and I need to get rid of them. So help a brother out. Literally $7 US for some of the best cosplay photos on the planet, which also happened to include a lot of titties. Hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button for more bald content. Join the Discord for more memes and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.